In this video, we're going to take a look at infinite limits and vertical asymptotes, and actually how infinite limits can help us determine what the vertical asymptote is. So if the values of f of x increase or decrease indefinitely as x approaches a from the right or left, the limit does not exist. However, instead of writing does not exist, we're going to write infinity or negative infinity so we know what direction the graph is going in. So let's take a look at this first example. So in this function, um, I'm asking uh, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? We know it's from the right because of the positive sign. So from the right would be from this side, and we're approaching 0, which is on the y-axis. And so as we approach from the right, we can see that the graph keeps going up and up and up, which means that it's going towards infinity. Now the second example where the graph is going to approaching from the left, and we know it's from the left because of the minus sign after the zero, we're looking at the graph from the left side. So again, here is where zero is, and we want to approach zero from the left, and this would be the left side of zero. And we can see that this time the graph is going down, 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 which means that it's going towards negative infinity. So we write negative infinity. Now, the last question here is asking what is the limit um, as x approaches 0. And because the left-hand and the right-hand limit uh, do not match, they're not the same, then we say that the limit does not exist. And we can write d and e. All right, so let's take a look at how these infinite limits uh, relate to the vertical asymptote. So the line, uh, which the vertical asymptote line, we'll call it x equals a. So this occurs at the graph of a function if either of this happens. And that's when there's a limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to infinity. We'll put a positive just to be clarify that. Pause infinity or negative infinity. Or the other time is when the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left, and that equals either positive infinity or negative infinity. So when any of the limits as x approaches that number it gives us a limit of positive infinity or negative infinity, then we know that there's going to be a vertical asymptote at that x value of a. Now, if both of the one-sided limits are the same, then we can actually just write the positive infinity or the negative infinity. And you'll notice I don't have the plus or the minus sign after the a because they are the same. So let's take a look at the last example here. And it's asking us to graph um, and find the limit of this uh, function here. So to graph, I'm going to draw a table of values. And I have x and y. And I can see that from this function here, when I'm talking about the function, I'm looking at just this piece here. Um, if the denominator, if sorry, if the denominator is 0, um, that would be caused because x is 3. 3 minus 3 would make 0, then we know it's going to be undefined, and that's actually really helpful as my starting point. So I'm going to choose x is 3, and that will give me an undefined y value. So from here, then I'm going to pick a couple of points on either side. So I'm going to pick x values of 1 and 2, and then also 4 and 5. So I'm going to plug in 1 for x, so 1 minus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so my first y value is 1 fourth. When I plug in 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So now I have 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Plug in 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1 again, so 1 divided by 1 is 1. And the last number is 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so again I have 1 fourth. So when I graph this, I want to start with my 3, my x value of 3, where it's undefined, because then that will help me to decide where the asymptote is. So here's my asymptote. 
And don't forget that because the numerator is always going to be 1, y can never be 0, which means I also have a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis. So let's plot the other four points to give us an idea. So we have 1 and a quarter. which doesn't want to graph, uh, 2 and 1, 4 and 1, and 5 and a quarter. So I'm going to connect these four points. I'm going to use a different color so it's easier to see. I can see that the graph keeps going up and up and up. No matter what direction I approach, whether from the left or right, I'm still getting the graph moving up. So we can say that the limit of this function as x approaches 3 is equal to infinity. Let's take a look at the second one, which looks really similar to the first, but the only difference is that my numerator has a negative 1 in it. So actually, when I create my table of values, I'm going to choose my same x values because uh, 3 minus 3 will still give me an undefined value in the denominator. But all my y values will actually be multiplied by negative 1 because of the negative, extra negative that's in the numerator. So I have negative 1 fourth, negative 1 negative 1, and then negative 1 fourth. So again, let's plot my vertical asymptote at 3, horizontal asymptote at 0 on the x-axis, plot my four points, And I'm just going to erase this one to make it a little bit closer to their x-axis. And let's connect my four points, but not touch the asymptote. So I can see that the graph this time, as x approaches 3, it does approach the asymptote, but it then turns and then it heads downwards. So we say the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 for the second graph, that's actually equal to negative infinity. So because it's heading to negative infinity, there's actually an asymptote at 3 which coincides or which actually gives me the example that it does at negative infinity. And the first example, the limit is approaching infinity, which then produces an asymptote at x equals 3, just like what we were supposed to have. And there you have it.